So typically what we do here is before we generate a toolpath, we go through the machine uh, setup in here. So we want to determine uh, what type of five axis machine configuration it is. So we go into five axis and a number of axes. And then this gives you the option to specify the machine configuration where there, the rotation axis is both on the head, like we pick head head, like if you have a C and a B or A and a B, if the rotation is on the spindle itself, where the part remains stationary on the machine, and then you would pick configuration head head, or it could be a combination of a rotary table and a rotary head, or we could be like a Tronian type of machine, which could be table table. So you make the determination here. Now, based on what I see here, uh, the part, it to me, it looks like your machine is a head head configuration where both the rotations are on the head. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, your uh, machine can handle um, you know, computation of the gauge length at the control level, so you can basically just clear this checkbox in here, and you put the gauge length as zero uh, over here if you're doing like what is called a TCP on, or if its controller does like a G48.1 or you know, G48S1, each controller has its own way of handling it, so you don't have to double compensate here, so you can put the gauge length as zero. If your control is not compensating for a gauge length, then you need to put in the distance from the pivot point to the spindle face under gauge length, and then the tool length is defined when you, as you create the tools. Okay. 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 So I'm going to leave it as zero. Uh, we can change it at any time and then regenerate the operations. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to define our primary axis and the secondary axis. The primary is the uh, rotation of you could be typically like a C axis, which rotates about uh, parallel to the Z. We could pick the primary axis, and then the secondary axis could be rotating about the X or the Y, depending on how your machine is set up in here. So that could be your A or the B, and you can specify rotary axis limits as well, where you can specify a limit for the secondary, or you can even say user defined. And for example, I could say the secondary can go maybe like minus 100 or 110 to plus 110, depending on you know how your limits are established for the machine. So you can look up your uh, control, and you can see uh, you know based on what they set for the limits. The primary also, you can set a limit like 0 to 360, or if there aren't any cables or anything in the way, then you, and most machines can go like no limit, which is plus or minus, you know, th you know, infinite. So if you actually go to the help system in here, uh, there is an example of like a, a example of a five axis head you can see here. So this is what I was talking about, a C axis, and then it could be a B or an A axis for the secondary. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, um, so I'm going to use these numbers. Uh, does your limits look correct, or is it close enough for the purpose of our discussion today? I think that should be. I think that should work for today. Okay. All right. Okay. So once you define the machine tool, uh, the next step is to basically make a selection for your post processor in here. Uh, this can be done even before you post process the output to the machine. We've developed posts for several different five-axis machines, and each machine would be like customized for post. Like uh, for example, here I can we have different Fager controllers. Are you using uh, yeah, a Fager using control or uh, what is it that we're using? The um, I believe it's the 8065. Okay, uh, is it a DMS 8065 that you're using Fager? Yeah, yes, it is. Okay, and the post can be edited and tweaked around here, so we can um, customize the post. So if you take a look here, uh, in this a particular case, we are calling out a G48S1, which is there, uh, basically the tool comp on for the uh, gauge length. So the S1 basically activates it, and an S0 basically cancels it out right here. So you can see a G48S0 in the program, and, and all of this can be customized, and in this particular post, I believe it said the primary is defined as C and then the secondary is defined as B axis, but we can always, you know, swap that out if it's an A or a B or, you know, whatever the axis codes are. Yeah, okay. And we will help you with the post customization. And if you want the extension to be NC, TAP, or .PIM, or whatever is the preferred extension, you can set it up right in here. Okay? Yeah. All right. So uh, the next step is to build your stock. So. If the you know if it's already roughed down to this closed net shape of the part itself, then you can define a stock from selection in Rhino Cam, where you can actually model your stock or build it in Rhino, and then you can just select the you know solid model and do a stock by selection. Mm -hmm. yep. So if you're starting out with a, a block of material, then you would basically define like a box or a part box stock, and you'd basically go through the process of uh, you know uh, creating your 
uh, roughing operations. That could be like an indexed operation for roughing. We can do like a three plus two roughing operation using three axis roughing techniques. And then you can go back and do a, you know, finishing or pre-finishing using the continuous five axis methods. You can do a combination of both indexed and continuous operations with these. Okay. Now, if you want me to build a custom stock in here, uh, maybe we can take some of these surfaces in Rhino, do an offset surface, convert it to like a solid model to do it. So that will give you a stock. If I try to pick these surfaces in here and try to do a stock from selection, uh, you know, it might not work uh, because it's not a watertight model. You can see there's no solid model found in here. So that's the reason why it's not letting us do a stock by selection. But, you know, you can model it. And you know, that's the nice thing about working within Rhino. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, so, uh, let's say that we already approximated it to like two quarter inch of where it is, and then uh, yeah. So we need to model something in Rhino to be able to define a stock by selection. I just used a part box stock in here for our discussion here, but you know, I, I really don't have to define a stock for just programming tool paths. I can just yeah, do a delete yeah, stock and just you know work with it. We're mostly just interested in kind of like doing the surfing. Let's okay. We've already roughed it and we don't need to do that. Maybe. Okay, so we'll go into five axis and we can do a swarf machining. Yeah. And now we pick uh, the wall surfaces and then we can do a floor surface or a floor curve. So I could do a surface selection in here, curve selection. I can say select the curve. I can pick this uh, curve edge, the surface edge right there. So you can see we are using Rhino selection tools. And I can select this as the uh, wall surface in here. So basically you select your surface. And you check the surface normal direction. And then you can pick your curve selection. So we def display the surface normal direction based on what you have in Rhino for the surface selection. And if you want to flip the normal direction, you can always flip it in here. And then you make a selection for your tool. You can have your library of tools loaded. You can pick the tool that's most ideal for this process. You can pick an end mill, a ball mill, a corner radius tool, or even in like a taper tool, depending on what type of tool you'd like to select. Great. Um, the tool that we were using for that was a 10-inch long uh, bit with a 1-inch diameter. Um, okay. So, okay, so I'll do a 1-inch here, and then the tool length I'll put in 10. I'll update the tool diameter to 1-inch. I'll just put in a holder diameter of inch and a quarter. Holder yeah, length awesome. is actually 10 inches on the tool. Oh, flute length was 10. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. So yeah, just... yeah, so. Okay, so I'll do a save as new tool. I'll automatically update the tool number here. So we have a, a one inch flat mill defined. You can set your feeds and speeds. You can also load them from the tool. Uh, the clearance, there's different ways we can define it in five axis. So you could do a planar clearance or you could do a cylinder clearance depending on you know what your cylinder axis is defined about. You can establish that. Um, so you can do, if you want to do a cylinder clearance, you can put that in there. And you can specify a radius for it also. You can change the radius, or you can just do a planar clearance as well. Um, just question. So also in the, the folder that we sent you, there was um, an MTD file. I don't know if that works with RhinoCam the same way, but it's a file that we would pull into PowerMill that is, it's, a, it's a model, effectively a working model of the spindle head that we're using. So okay. when we run simulations, we can actually visualize the specific head. That okay. We're... So we we do not read an MTD file. So what we do is, uh, let me uh, go back in here. So in the machine uh, tool setup, we have machine definition. We have an option to do load from file. And uh, there is a machines folder in the install directory. You'll probably see it even in your copy of RhinoCam. So if you go into the machines folder, there's already a pre-built list of machines, but we can add additional machine tools in here. So for example, if you consider one of these five axis uh, routers in here, you need an XML file, which establishes all the uh, kinematics you can open with like a text editor, like a notepad. So it basically has the mapping of the uh, you know machines, like the head and stuff like that. And then a, in an STL file that represents each of yeah. these uh, X, Y, Z, and then the rotational axis. So if I pick one of these in here, uh, let's say I want to just grab this one. That would be a closest one to what you have. You can actually see that it'll display the machine tool um, oh, okay. over there. But you need to have a stock to be able to run a, 
uh, you know, simulation with the machine tool. This just basically, you know, shows you uh, with the machine tool on, on, you know, during the simulation, but it doesn't check any collisions or interference with the machine itself. It just helps you in visualizing the orientation of the tool when you run like a simulation.